Shalom. Today we are continuing in the Gospel according to John. We are investigating the Hebraic background, what the people of Yeshua's time would have understood. Today we're in chapter 9, which just covers really one event, starting in verse 1. And as Yeshua passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Yeshua answered, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, I just want to touch on one uh, internet phenomenon. I have heard it taught that there were three miracles that the Messiah would do. And one of these is what we're talking about today, healing a man born blind. The other two are healing a Jewish leper, and the third is casting a demon out of a mute person. When I went to research source documents for this teaching, I actually found none. I did not make an extensive search of Talmud, but I did look around to see what I could find. On the other hand, there are many articles stating these facts. The clearest one and the best laid out one is by Arnold Fruchtenbaum, who is a person who is foundational in Messianic Jewish belief. He does not cite any Talmudic sources for this teaching, but he does lay out the chronology of the Gospels and how these events happened and how they built on one another. I think that he is the source, considering this article I think was written in 1983, that he is the source for the teaching and everyone else has just picked his material up and published it without citing their source either. So this is something that happens on the internet all the time. You go looking, oh, I heard this, and you go looking for some specific information, and lots of people have posted it, but it all goes back to one guy who said something at one point in time. So I think we need to be careful about always citing our sources. And one thing we've talked about is the connection of sin to disease. And there are plenty of scriptures talking about that, Old and New Testament. From the Talmud, Rav Ami said, There is no death without sin. Were a person not to sin, he would not die. And there is no suffering without iniquity. So there is a discussion that arises whether the parents are at fault by their sin, which we see that up to a certain point in time, the children were subject to the sins of their parents, or whether something could happen in the uterus. We talked last time about the Yetzer Hara, the evil inclination. And so there are several stories in the Talmud of the baby kicked inside the womb, and then something happened to the mother, and then something happened to the baby. It seems that all of this idea that it has to be either the fault of the parents or the child. And then much later came in this idea of reincarnation, which also figures into not the rabbinical argument, but the current argument. This idea is a reaction against the concept of original sin. And as we said in traditional Judaism, they do not adhere to this. This even sounds a lot like some things that are taught in evangelical circles today. That is, if someone is sick, either they're in sin or they're under a curse. I think it is good always to remember what Yeshua said. This happened because the works of God need to be made manifest. Now, where these three specific miracles came from, uh, partially maybe from Isaiah 35, 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. Now, it happens in one of the tractates in the Talmud, Nidarim, in chapter 20, that these four specific sins, lame, mute, deaf, and blind, are all attributed to inappropriate sexual behavior. If you want to know what that is, you can go look it up in this citation, that each thing causes one of these disabilities. But Yeshua himself cited the messianic claims of the healing in Matthew 11:5. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. 
Now it is known from scripture who opens the eyes of the blind. Psalm 146, 8. Yehovah opens the eyes of the blind. Yehovah raises them that are bowed down. Yehovah loves righteousness. Also in Exodus 4:11, And Yehovah said unto him, that is unto Moses, who has made man's mouth, or who makes him dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind, have not I, Yehovah. So this is another reason why it is expected that only the Messiah can accomplish these miracles, because it must be the man from Yehovah, the man of God, or the man who is God. Now concerning the healing of the leper, the rabbis confess that they were unable to do anything. There is some healing of lepers. We see in Numbers 12, 13, Miriam is struck with leprosy. But in Moses' prayer, he cries out, Heal her, O God. Only God can heal the leper. Naaman is not a Jew, so he wouldn't qualify for this miracle. And it is interesting that we find that everyone can be can become impure from negaim, from being touched by leprosy or whatever that skin disease is, except for a non-Jew and a resident alien. All are qualified to inspect the leprosy, but only a priest may declare them unclean or clean. So it's almost like if a foreigner gets leprosy, it doesn't count. As far as casting a demon out of a mute person, there was a ritual prescribed for casting demons out in rabbinic times but in order to do that you had to get the name of the demon and we see several times Yeshua asks the name of the demon but if the name of the demon does not come forth because the person cannot speak then the rabbis are at a loss to cast out the demon we see in Luke eleven fourteen, and he was casting out a demon and it was mute so it was when the demon had gone out that the mute spoke and the multitudes marveled. So this is also associated as a messianic miracle. In fact, also deaf mutes are exempt from doing the commandments, and even if they fulfill them, it is counted for nothing. Again in Matthew 12, 23 Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, he could not speak, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, is not this the son of David? They recognize by the miracle that Yeshua must be the Messiah. Coming back to the text in 9 verse 6, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay and said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which by interpretation is sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore they said unto him, How were your eyes opened? So we see four different accounts of Yeshua healing blind people. In the case of Bartimaeus, he just said, Your faith healed you. In the Matthew 9, he touched their eyes. In Mark 6, he spit on the man's eyes. And here he spit in the ground and made mud. Saliva is a common ingredient for cures for eye problems that you see in Talmud. The point here is that this is a special case because this man was born blind. Continuing in verse 11, he answered and said, A man that is called Yeshua made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Then they said unto him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was a Sabbath day when Yeshua made the clay and opened his eyes. So this is the crux of the matter. Not that he healed the man, but that he made the clay. This is forbidden as work on Shabbat. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore, said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God, because he does not keep the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. As we have said, wherever Yeshua shows up, there is a division. Continuing in verse 17, they said unto the blind man again, what do you say of him, that he has opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son who you say was born blind? 
How does he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but by what means he sees, we know not. Or who has opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him, he shall speak for himself. These words spoke his parents because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if any man did confess that he was the Messiah, he should be put out of the synagogue. Being put out of the synagogue is equivalent to being cut off from the community. Also, considering that this man was a beggar, we imagine that the family has been receiving alms from the community, and now they will no longer receive those if they are cut off from the community. Continuing in verse 23, Therefore, said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again they called the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise, we know that this man is a sinner. Well, that's kind of peculiar. Hey, here's a sinner, give God praise. It just doesn't really go together, does it? He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I do know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he do to you? How opened he your eyes? He answered them, I have already told you, and you did not hear. Wherefore, would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. Again, who is Yeshua? Where has he come from? Who are his parents? The man answered and said unto them, Why, wherein is a marvelous thing, that you do not know whence he is, and yet he has opened mine eyes. Now we know that the Lord does not hear sinners, but if any man be a wor worshiper of God, and does his will, him he hears. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. So this verse 32 again attests to the fact that this is a unique miracle that only God can perform. Verse 34, they answered and said unto him, you were altogether born in sins, and do you teach us? And they cast him out. Yeshua heard that they had cast him out, and when he found him, he said unto him, Do you believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? So remember, the man was blind, and then he had mud in his eyes, and then he went off to Siloam, and then he could see, so he never actually has seen Yeshua up till this moment. In verse 37, And Yeshua said unto him, You have both seen him, and it is he that talks with you. And he said, Lord, I believe and he worshiped him. Now we have the man's full redemption. It's one thing to be saved of a physical ailment, but to come into the kingdom, to profess Yeshua as Lord, as God, he fully comes into covenant. So by virtue of his disability, he was cut off and away from society, although he was allowed to participate in re religious ritual and so on. Now that he can see, he's cut off from society. He cannot participate in their religious ceremonies. He is cast out of the synagogue. He trades one exclusion for another. Finally, verse 39, And Yeshua said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which do not see might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Yeshua said unto them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remains. And we see that God did blind the people. Isaiah 29.10 for Jehovah has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and has closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers he has covered. And again in Isaiah 6, 9 and 10, And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear indeed, but understand not, and see indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return and be healed. And for what purpose is this? If the people are blind, they cannot be held to the standard. And Yehovah made a provision for this, as Paul wrote in Romans 11:25. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. 
Until next time, Tasimitai Nayim al Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.